Good afternoon, or good evening, good morning, wherever you are. Welcome to this uh, 27th Aureopa webinar, the last one of the year 2020, which is, I think, for many people a special year. For Aureopa, it's the second season, and uh, happy to see that we can continue with, uh, well, almost every week having a webinar and providing you information on topics you were, you're interested in or you haven't known of or whatever. So welcome everybody. And today we have a, a session uh, done by uh, Josh, Joshua Anglesia. Um, he started, or he did a previous uh, session, it's now I think eight weeks ago, about uh, using Power Automate. And yes, it, it was his first one. I think he did a good job, but it was a bit too big to, to cover everything, or a bit too short, I should say, uh, altogether. And today, uh, he was, uh, uh, he, he would really wanted to really to uh, share the part he couldn't share in the previous session is uh, to create a custom uh, BC connector to uh, uh, Power Automate or use Power Automate. So, welcome, Josh. Um, before I hand off over to you, uh, as normally, I'll just uh, go uh, through the standard slides just to make sure that everybody stepping in for the first time is in the known. Uh, your, muke, your, your mic is muted, your muke is muted, that sounds also very nice, meaning you cannot post your questions by uh, mouth, you could say, but please use the question window to put them in. And me, Luc van Vught, I am today again your moderator and I will pick up the questions and uh, Josh and I agreed that I will pose the questions at the moment when they are relevant and if not directly relevant I might keep it for a, a later moment or at the end of this session. Uh, so feel free to do that of course um, it's here for you and if you have questions we're here also for you to answer them. As you might know this will be recorded. We have got a nice library already. This will be the, as I said, the 27th one. So 26 uh, recordings are already out there. Slowly growing group of uh, subscribers. Uh, yes, we have an own channel. So you should be able to find it on YouTube by uh, typing Arioba Arioba webinar. So uh, use it, share it, uh, reuse it, reference it in whatever way you want. Um, if you're not yet uh, subscribe to our newsletter, please do. Um, last Monday we did send out a new one because um, uh, I was able to uh, more or less uh, uh, catch Arend Jan Kaufman to do our next webinar. I hadn't had planned anything yet for the new year um, and uh, luckily for the, for the, the, the second week actually, the 12th of January, Arend Jan will talk about the tools he uses to test APIs. It was I think a short discussion on Twitter that um, uh, I, I had a look at and, and, and then post to Arendt Jan. Oh no, oh no, it was Arendt Jan who proposed to do this as a, a Aureopo webinar. Any things will be coming up and yes, every time again, uh, let's say waking you up. If you have any ideas on topics, please share them. And uh, if you want to be a speaker, surely also. Um, and I'll continue to uh, provide uh, or find any next topic in any next session. Um, yes, you will find the links always on our uh, uh, website where you find the registration link also. So 12th of January is planned, the rest will come. Um, before, of course, we I'll hand off. Uh, actually, this time I have an extra slide. Uh, oh no, I have an extra slide at the end. But uh, I'll need to thank Fornaf for uh, being our sponsor. And that's actually my introduction. Um, Josh, I'm going to uh, make you presenter and then you can share your screen. And uh, let's say this virtual floor is yours. Perfect, thank you very much. Yeah, and your screen is in view, so that's, that's, that's good, that's okay. That's a good start. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, first, thank you for having me. Uh, so I am I'm Josh Anglesey. Uh, kind of starting bottom left and then moving across this uh, this view here. I work for Expedition, part in the UK. I'm a pre-sales consultant. Uh, if you want to look at my uh, blog, there's a, a link for that there, and also my Twitter handle there if you want to, to follow. Uh, regularly posting things around 
Business Central and Power Platform. So what are we looking at? We're going to be looking at creating a custom connector. I've kind of banned it out more so to be Power Platform as opposed to just uh, Power Automate, but definitely for, for Business Central data. Uh, if you wanted to know what I look like, there's a picture of me way before we all had to experience lockdown, so I'm probably not anywhere near that smiley anymore, but um, that's probably a different story. Why have I chosen to do this is probably a good, a good question. And it's more down to the fact, if we were to jump over to Power Automate over here, just ever so quickly. And I've you know, hooked up to the Business Central connector over here. This is a shared connector, so it's the same experience for uh, Power Apps and also for, for Power Automate. If you um, do a drop down over here and start looking at the tables that are in place, you know, we sort of, you know, do a brief scroll down here, you'll we'll see that it's relatively scaled back in you know, what you can get available or be made available uh, within either of the either of the platforms. So given that Business Central is such an ex uh, extendable product, we're going to want to be able to fire in different bits of data if we've got bespoke tables or if, or likely, we're, we're missing a, a generic one, which is already in, in the solution. So with that kind of in, in mind, I'm going to show you a little bit of a maybe ugly looking uh, app. I don't always make lovely, make it. Take really nice uh, looking applications uh, all the time, but here is some contact data. Uh, depending on the version you're used to, this is all uh, GB data. Uh, this is all coming out of of a Cronus database, and it's it's contact information. So this is using a custom connector to to get the information in place. We've got a refresh button which we can use here that uses the the API page, uh, which which ends up driving this. And uh, you know, we were to go down a level, then uh, we also have an update uh, button, and again that uses the the API to to do some to do some things. So if we were to I don't know let's say change you know, well actually we'll change this a bit of the address here shall we? So we'll change that to be twenty five for example uh, on floor number two now. Update the contact. I've briefly seen something trickling over the top there. That would have. Uh, updated the, the information, then we can do a refresh here. And now that's at 25. So that's not all using just the, the custom connector. So we need to go ahead and, and, and build one. So coming out of that view there and jumping over into here. How does this manifest itself? Uh, we need to know how to get going uh, with things. So we will have to do some coding uh, for that. Luckily, you won't have to see me struggle uh, through doing that live uh, on on screen now but everything has to be done through a api type page uh, so here is a here's a custom one this is for the, the contact uh, table or, or entity and you'll need to go ahead and you know, publish this into your environment so that it's it's regularly available now, in, in doing that, uh, that probably doesn't give us everything that we need straight away. Um, you're going to want to make sure that that endpoint is, is of course, working. So, uh, yeah, a, a tool like Postman is, is great for that. There is um, tools within VS Code as well that you can use for, for, for doing that type of testing. But yeah, at least make sure that your endpoint is, is, is valid and working and is uh, passing back uh, good quality, valid uh, JSON. Which is, which is what this is here. I'm only going to sort of restrict this today uh, for the session to two types of commands. So we'll do the get command, we'll do the patch command, uh, but the, the steps for conducting this on the delete command or also uh, the post command are, are much the same. Just wanted to try and keep it uh, relatively condensed. Uh, but if you want more info on the other two commands, I recently did a uh, presentation for BC Tech Talk. Uh, I'm going to put the link if you're watching this afterwards on, on the YouTube, uh, so you can check it out from there. So uh, how do we go about doing this? Well, in Power Apps or Power Automate, you can get to this same custom connectors uh, part that I'm throwing up on the screen uh, through either of them, again, because they're, they're shared. You need to jump over here and you need to start creating yep, 
I'm going to do it from blank. There is other methods, of course, for, for generating it, but just so you can really see it from uh, this sort of full story, we're going to do it from blank. And so we'll call this webinar. Okay, so you can do something a little bit more uh, funky with, with pictures and colours and, and what have we. Uh, I'm not going to do that now just to keep keep the speed up, but we're going to just show the important uh, values that need to be in place. So it is a um, HTTPS uh, endpoint, so we can keep that with the default value that, that comes over. But then we uh, need the, the host information. So in our case, this is the, uh, the host. We don't necessarily need to put in a base URL at this stage because we're going to put that into the, the main endpoint that we want to, to utilize. Uh, it's something that you could do if you wanted to put some more information in here, but I've seen it actually work better where you don't put the base URL in this in this particular section. Just this amount of information at this stage is, is fine. Authentication type, uh, well, eventually we're going to have to get used to using o OAuth 2, uh, but the basic, just for ba the basis of speed, is, is still available for us. So you can pass in here what would be parameters essentially. So the user knows, okay, I've got to pass a username and a password. So we're just sort of generically titling those um, as something. And that's sufficient for, for the time being. And we get into kind of the, where the real action is. And this is you laying out what the connector can actually do essentially and then which endpoints it's going to use and uh, what body values it might have and those those sorts of things. So the first command that we'll uh, put in is uh, a get command. So we'll say that is going to be getting contacts. And I'll actually end up calling that contacts. Now we need to give it a request to deal with. And what's uh, nice about using this sort of wizard, I suppose, is that it does give you prompts and the ability to uh, pass in sample information as well, which just make it a little bit more user friendly. We're working on the get uh, command over here. And then we need to pass in uh, the URL information. So again, this is another reason why it's nice to have a like postman around because if you tested the endpoint already in there and it's work that's valid, uh, that you can by and large go and end up uh, copying and pasting that information in, uh, which is great. Which I'll do here. But I want to identify a few extra things from a syntax uh, point of view. So in postman, you can of course set uh, variables. So I have double curly braces um, set, set around those. But inside of uh, the URL point that you're, you, you're pasting into here, you have to um, give it just single curly braces to define that that's a parameter that the user must uh, stipulate when they want to work with this connector. So you can do it for more areas if, if you desire, uh, but I think tenant and then the company ID is at least uh, sufficient. So if we import that, once I'm done, you'll notice that it's, it's picked up because of the syntax, these being in the curly braces. These are defined now as, as parameters. So the user will be asked for that parameter value when working with this. Uh, given this is a, a, a get command, uh, what we're effectively looking for is much as what we've ended up seeing over in, in Postman over here, to this raw uh, body that come, comes over to us. And we will be able to set uh, what the, the response is. 
um, again, we can use the ability to paste in uh, sample information. So what you want to be careful uh, with when it comes to this part, especially, is and again, uh, really emphasizing the, the point of testing, is when we get information back from Postman over here, what we um, end up receiving eventually, if you take note again of syntax, anything that's inside of a square bracket is an array. And then anything that's inside of the curly braces within that is, is a adjacent object. So we get back a, a full array of detail. So therefore, we need to make sure our custom connector is aware of that. Because it might have been or felt sensible to say, OK, let's just grab that and, and paste it in, because that's the, the main stuff that you want to work with uh, in terms of yeah, a flow that you are working with, or when you're building out a an app, you want to be able to display this information, uh, but that's not what the connector is going to see. It wants to see everything. So I would typically end up grabbing, you know, doing Control A over here, Control C, and then going back over to the wizard, and then you can paste that entire uh, thing in. Uh, just import it. Okay, and we're seeing now a collection of values, which yes, that's that's definitely relatable to what we were thinking about and, and seeing over here in Postman. So I'm relatively happy at this stage. We can then start thinking about our uh, next next action. So we're going to do a, a patch one. There's two patch contacts. So much the same uh, sort of situation as before. So we need the initial uh, request. So we pick the verb that this relates to. Again, I'm able to do copy and paste because I was working with that particular command over here in, in, in Postman. So there is some minor um, alterations to the endpoint itself because at this point we know we want to modify a contact. And in the case of my API page, just flip back over into VS Code, I've um, stated this property here, the OData key fields uh, property with using the system ID. So when it comes to identifying what it is that I want to modify, that's what I'm going to end up passing in here in uh, regular brackets to indicate that's the record that I want to, to make some adjustments to. And then after that, it's just a case of passing in uh, some JSON, uh, which makes pays reference to the fields that you're actually able to handle within that endpoint. So if you were to give him test here, is uh, yeah, happy with the end result. So we will want to have something like this this time. Uh, so I've added in an additional uh, parameter for the end user to pass over, and that's the ID of the record that we're currently working with. The other thing that's kind of going on in our postman uh, example, we jump into the headers area, is that we're also um, handling if match to ensure that we're actually able to do the modification. So one of the rules within OData is if you're going to modify, you at least need to pass over this particular uh, header property. So wildcards is, is acceptable um, at this stage, but you can also handle uh, the OData e tag uh, if you wanted to be more, more particular. Um, so our command over here needs to at least pay reference to the fact that we're looking for an if match header uh, property to be passed over. 
whenever an uh, end user or sorry, user works with this. Uh, from a, a body point of view, you can put something in here at this point. Uh, there is still the need to potentially do it in the response section, but we will at least put in a body of what we're roughly expecting to handle at this stage. Something like that. So you can see I've done this as a scaled back version now. It doesn't necessarily go along with what I was saying about the get command, because now I'm just passing over the JSON that I want it to end up working with as opposed to the get command where we were saying, okay, this is the actual thing you will definitely have to handle. It's gonna be the full the full array, whereas this time it can just be a, a singular JSON object. Okay, so much like we had before, the different parameters inside of the curly uh, braces have been, have been stamped in. Uh, we're getting our a header for the if match, and we also have a body being passed in uh, as well. Uh, from a response standpoint, um, we don't necessarily need to handle anything directly within the, the, the connector um, itself, because we're not looking to receive information back necessarily. Uh, we're actually looking to make a, an update. So once you uh, defined uh, those those elements, the next thing to do is actually create the connector. And once you've created it, then we can uh, jump to the final step, which is which is testing it. If you feel as though I'm skipping over certain uh, properties and not explaining things in, in in the full length, it's mostly because to, to get things uh, yeah going, you can do it as stripped back as this. Uh, there's only a certain amount of commands that you can end up working with, uh, of course. So um, you probably would have noticed when we were looking at the, the different types of actions that there was other ones in there. Uh, but the, the, uh, the technology that we've got available, uh, in terms of Business Central, uh, can only handle get, patch, uh, post, and, and delete uh, at, at this point in time, at least. If you try to use uh, something like put, for instance, which is one of the other verbs, um, you would you would be told that it's not currently compatible. Okay, so that's uh, that's kind of had and created it uh, for us. If we end up making any changes uh, to to things, then that would then become an update of the connector. We jump into the uh, test area. The first thing you'll need to do is um, just to generate a a, a connection with your connector. So for each user that works with Power Platform, you're able to uh, define connections to the different connectors that are on offer. So if we think about Office 365, for instance, and Business Central, once you've defined a connection to that, uh, it will be stored so that you're not prompted constantly uh, to provide the credentials. So for my um, current login, I'm going to go ahead and establish a connection to this custom connector. So we defined um, earlier on that it was going to be using uh, the, the basic authentication type, which uh, at this point in time would be us using a web service key. So you can uh, generate that off of the, the user card. Uh, directly within Business Central. Okay, uh, that will by and large throw you over to the connections page to um, yeah, state that it's been it's been created for you. So you can see over here we've now got one for the webinar API. We've established that. We take ourselves back over to our custom connect section and we can uh, finalize the the test okay so he is nicely connected uh, so yeah each command so it's worth worth testing each of them 
and you'll now need to pass in your parameters uh, for this to to fire off. So I'm just going to grab those elements that we need. Okay, uh, looks looks good. So status 200. And we can see the this is what it's pulling back, which it matches exactly what we were experiencing inside of Postman. So we are we are happy chappies. If we then uh, look at our our patch, so it you know looks a much 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 different, and um, yeah, it's because of the what we're looking to try and do there. So again, we need to pass in similar set of details so of tenants. Now, company uh, ID wise, I am going to come back over to uh, Postman. Uh, I will pick an ID from over here. and pass in an if match value and then we need to yeah say what it is that needs to be to be changed uh, so let's go with an address value and give it a test and also happy uh, the result. At that point, we're kind of ready, so we'll um, update the connector to say it's been been tested. And it'll now be ready for us to you know, actually utilize within the the platform. So jumping back over here to our previous app, put us into the edit uh, area here where we can create uh, apps. And we do a new blank page. And also work, work from here. But the first thing we need to do is bring in our custom connector. So we can see all connectors and then search for him. And I probably need to refresh the connectors because we just created a brand new one. And there he is. So licensing wise, you do need to have um, a certain level available to you uh, we can maybe tackle that a little bit later as to exactly which one it is but it does fit within the sort of premium level uh, of licensing which is the same for the business central connector anyway so fine uh, we have ourselves some a connector to work with, but now we need to get some information out of it and then potentially pass some information through it uh, to, to, to make updates as well. Uh, you can end up uh, bringing the data in in a few different ways. Uh, it might be that the screen itself um, that you're working with, you sort of think about pages within uh, Business Central when that page is made visible, for instance, then you know, data gets gets pulled uh, potentially. So you could end up having the usage of the custom connector on a property like that within the app, or you could end up having it when you start the app itself. You know, it could be when you actually pull pull the information in. Just to keep it uh, fairly simplistic, we're going to use just a manual button. Uh, to bring in the information and do the, the get command of our, our custom connector. 
and then we'll see how we end up you know, working with the fact that we're getting um, you know, a relatively large uh, collection of information, so an array, and how that ends up it being uh, viewed by a user within uh, Power Apps, at least. Power Automate so that, uh, it's a little bit easier because it's just a, a set of JSON for us to work with. So for my button, I have a property called on, on select. So pretty much when the user hits this button, do something. So we have our webinar app here. And we can see that we've got our get contacts uh, command. And then we can also then see that we're being asked for our, our two parameters that we saw in the in the test. So we know that those parts are manifesting themselves correctly, within power apps at least. So I've um, I've set to uh, global variables for passing over the uh, tenant ID and the, the company ID. So we've got those those in place. And what's kind of unique about using uh, the custom connectors over the standard uh, sort of business central connector, I suppose, uh, is that you need to be able to store the information um, somewhere. It doesn't necessarily handle handle it in the exact same way that the, uh, the standard connector does. What do I mean by that? Well, if I was to you know go ahead and hit this endpoint now, then I will get a problem with that. Oh, first of all, the connection seems to be slightly off, so let's just see what's going on with him. Let's check you again. Yeah, we are connected. Okay. Well, it wasn't what quite the problem that I was looking to, to handle, but the problem I did want to handle was storing the information somewhere. So there's a command called clear collect where you build up a, a collection like a repository of data, which is what we will do here. And then you store uh, the result that you get from that endpoint inside of this. So each time we uh, refresh it, we'll refresh it into this, this collection of information. Let's just see, oh, you're super not happy. Apparently not authorized. Slightly okay, well, I won't worry about it too much because I've already got the connector anyway uh, previously set up, so we can just use use that exactly the exact same endpoint anyway. And I know that the connection's already established, so let's go with that. Passing the same parameter values. Okay, you sort of vaguely see those sort of loading buttons at the top there, showing that it's working with the connection. And so what's happened as a result of this? Uh, well, we've now passed some information into a collection. So it's this contact data one that we've just uh, generated. This is what ends up sitting in inside of it, which maybe doesn't quite look like what we were after. Uh, however, if we end up clicking on this section here, it's almost do a bit of a drill down inside of it. And uh, we started getting, you know, Kind of what we're looking to see. 
and why has it kind of manifested itself in this way? Well, this is uh, boiling down to how we receive the information from, from the endpoint. So again, going back to Postman and trying to labor this point as much as possible, uh, we end up getting all of the values inside of here, which is the array. And that's where they all end up sitting. So if we're going to pull the information into the app so the user can actually look at it and, and use it, uh, then we'll need to make sure we pull it from within there. So let's insert another uh, control to actually present the information to the user. So if I pick a, a blank gallery to work with here, and I'm going to want to pull my information from uh, the contact data. And then probably bring in uh, bring in some particular fields. Uh, now, for me to do that, I'm going to need to change this because the contact data, as we saw from here, is presenting uh, that, and we want to go a level deeper. So we can wrap this in a, a formula to take care of that. Okay, so go into contact data and then pull uh, the first thing you get from from value, which in our case is going to be uh, an array of, of information. So from doing that, we should be able to insert some bits and pieces. Okay, well, I definitely had an O data tag, so that's a good start. But we might want to go for something more familiar, like the the name of our contact. And now we're starting to see something a little bit more sensible. So that is how we end up pulling the information in uh, to start working with it inside of uh, a gallery. So we've now used our endpoint, pulled pulled the data in. Okay, but now we might want to start thinking about um, adjusting uh, that data. So I'm going to insert something for us to go ahead and think about that. So if I put in uh, an icon, this is going to look really ugly, by the way, but um, yeah, don't have a tremendous amount of time. So. And uh, what I'm thinking is I'll do another new another new screen over here. And this is where we'll do some editing information. Uh, the reason why I'm choosing to do it like this will become clear in a moment. Okay, cool. So our icon, when I tap on him, I want some stuff to happen. So it's going to select the record uh, that's in view, which is fine, happy with that. And what I want to do is move over to that new screen that I've um, generated and not renamed. So it's going to be called screen two. And so when you're going into uh, different screens, you can put in like a transition, much like what you'd see in uh, PowerPoint. You need to choose what. Uh, you can't have it says nothing happens, but at least you need to have something. And we can also pass in um, some data to that page, which is also referred to as context here. So when you're working with galleries, uh, it has this notion of this item. So because we've selected the item in the previous step, uh, we now know we're going to get exactly that one that's been selected. So we can then pass that over into the next screen. So much like um, passing in the uh, the rec when you were uh, going into a new uh, function, let's say. 
Cool, so that's going to give us that. Uh, if you hold Alt, and then you can do some of the commands uh, themselves whilst you're in this uh, building can kind of you you wanted to jump over and do it properly you can preview the app as well but by no means the best uh, with power platform but i'll i'll tell you what i do now at least okay uh, so now we've ended up doing that we passed in some context if i jump to the variables um, area this is where you kind of set um, some local variables just for that individual um, screen that you're working with, which is cool because now we've got the exact context we want to work with uh, with regards to this one. And the most important piece of this puzzle is going to be the ID. Yeah, we need to give them some stuff to edit, but by and large, it's the ID that uh, we're, we're primarily concerned with. So again, I chuck a, a button into play here, and this will be super ugly, but if you can accept that, then I'll accept it too. Because I've now got global uh, sort of local variables to this page. The, these are all set with these different names, which is which is perfect for us. So we can go ahead and uh, get this input, uh, this text input, which the user can edit, and then we can just pass in the uh, page variable. Uh, I'll fill it in with uh, what it was given uh, from that earlier stage, which is which is cool. So then we need to use the. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to stick to this one now because I know it's working. Uh, the patch command related uh, to the connector that we made earlier. So again, it's the tenant ID as a parameter. Uh, your company ID. And then we're going to start needing to put in some extra uh, bits and pieces. This is where the, uh, the if match value is going to be needed uh, and those, those sorts of elements. And the syntax on this is a little bit particular, so just take care of that. Uh, and then we have we can start layering in uh, the parts that we can pass over. Uh, so in our case, we're going to be able to give an address. Uh, which we have conveniently stored in our text input one text. So it's the text that's inside of there. Probably missed some syntax somewhere. In the interest of keeping it speedy, let me just pinch what I did slightly earlier. Oh, yeah, that'll be why. I've missed out a step, of course. I even said it before I started. It's a good way to check whether we are still following you i was already thinking where's the id yeah <laughs> good cool that's better that's more what i was expecting on the formula bar uh, yeah it should give you prompt wherever uh, possible based on what's been stipulated in the connector so yeah we're getting we're getting there now just missed out the uh the id so again you can pass that in just as the uh, the local variable to the page because we're not we're not editing anything there. Whereas I've done it as the text input here because I'm allowing the user the flexibility to change that. And that's where I want to pick the information up from. Instead of me actually stating the uh, page variable. Because that's been set by another place, so that won't get edited. Uh, it's just worth, worth mentioning that. Okay, so let's see if you're going to work. Uh, so let's do that as Station Street, and it's 
could, you could end up passing, uh, you know, you're passing this in a different style. You could end up doing it via Power Automate and then Power Automate can pass you back a message to say it's been successful or upon us receiving a 200 uh, response, we could do that in the custom connector itself. Upon receiving that, then we could flash open a, you know, a message on screen to say it was successful. There's a few stylistic choices you could go for there. Uh, but if we come back over here and if we were to update that particular record, just kind of making it a bit faster, you can see now it's pulling through Station Street 125, uh, just to kind of verify that from a, the variables uh, standpoint, you can see that's what it's pulling in now. So that's been able to, to update quite nicely. So that would be most of what I wanted to identify in, in, in Power Apps, uh, at least. But let's think about it a little bit more from a Power Automate basis, if we can, as well, based on time time left. Yeah. Any questions at this point, Locked? Not No questions so far, and we got, well, it's 14 minutes to go, so. Cool. Okay, that's all right then. So I'll, I'll, well, I'll go for the webinar one, see if he's actually going to play ball this time. My tryouts. Okay, so it's definitely where it hasn't. Yeah, it's definitely where it hasn't uh, established the connection. Okay, fine. Yeah, I think the reason why that was erroring is just because it's. Um, I need to redo the, the connection itself. That's all, it's, it's failed with that, that's all. Anyway, this is the exact same connector, so no major difference. Uh, so passing the parameters that we need, uh, at least. We know that we're gonna get um, some JSON back with this, and we might wanna use that to do some subsequent steps. So to make sure we've got that working, uh, we use the pass JSON uh, feature here. So I'll read what we uh, we give it, and then we can end up kind of having that uh, saved in memory almost within the flow, and we can utilize it in subsequent actions. And so we want the entire uh, value. So again, if we think back to Power apps, the value is the is the array, and that's the whole thing that we want to work with. So we're going to choose, we're going to choose him. Uh, the past JSON feature needs to at least understand what you're going to potentially be giving it. So again, your you postman collection is going to be the quickest way of getting to that. And you can just do a paste uh, straight into here. Cool. Okay, so if we save this away. This is just a manual uh, based one where I'm going to have a button to press and um, yeah, you would uh, probably do something a little bit nicer uh, with this one in PHP. Oh, hello, let's check you out. Okay, that's uh, where I've been a little bit too happy with the way I've pasted that in. So um, picking up on that, it's expecting just the uh, array rather than the, uh, the starting point, which is of course the OData context tag. So it doesn't, doesn't expect to get that. You know, to keep it cleaner, I'll just play paste in some, a smaller subset of data. Okay. 
it's always more fun when things go a little bit off piste. It's, it's not called Jason, but this is called Murphy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so we are happy with that part there. Yeah, I don't expect there's still the same message. It is. So me getting the syntax stuff wrong, that's okay. That's good. Kind of illustrating why I end up needing this step is more to do with the fact that if we were to take it away, let's say, just really hammer it home. So this is everything that we'll get back, which is which is cool. If we add in another step after this, uh, let's give us something really easy like compose, which is just where we're writing some data. Can we already? Ah, okay, I think that's possibly why we've already got it to work with, I think. Okay, yeah, that's you know, me forgetting how that works with a custom connector. All right, so maybe we didn't have to do the past JSON because we had that already. So, yeah, this is a style of just writing temporarily uh, some information which you then pass on into another, into another action. So let's kind of do that. Let's just do it with a standard one for now. So let's change you to be an email. So this is nice using the dynamic uh, selection capability because you don't have to type in the syntax or understand as much about the JSON that you're working with. Here we get an email and maybe send an email. So that's the output of our compose action. And it is the thing I enjoy about using Power Platform so much that the ability to really low level code something and then get it to be actioned out and test it is, is way more rapid. It's a little bit better when using Docker, I suppose, for Business Central. Uh, but if you're doing it SaaS wise, loading in the changes takes some time. So, yeah, that's us now iterating through what we pulled from our custom connector and then doing something with it, uh, which actually does manifest itself slightly differently to how, how it would do from the from this uh, the regular connector, which is why I tripped myself up uh, a few times there. But I hope you can see now what I was actually looking to do, which was utilize some of the information we got from the, the connector in some way, shape or form. So the kind of thing that remains um, with our, our custom connector, which isn't necessarily like the rest of uh, the business central one, and it is, doesn't necessarily form part of creating a custom connector, which is principally what we've been looking at um, today. 
but it probably does offer up a next conversation uh, to, to be had. Will be around uh, the triggers that you have here. So actually, you know, layering in new triggers uh, with a, a custom connector would probably be the next thing to to look at. Uh, so that's definitely using something called web hooks to make that happen and that's handled in a in a totally different way to what we've been looking at um, today the custom connector is much more about being able to work directly with the data uh, but on a more on-demand basis as opposed to as and when um, changes take place that has to be handled in a different in a different way just in case that was a consideration point of anybody uh, at this at this point in time But I think uh, what we we can end up doing now, of course, is not totally rely on uh, what's in in the business central connector. I mean, as as strong as it is in in certain areas, uh, it can be limiting uh, for, for others. <coughs> uh, for instance, if um, if I'm trying to work with work with the connector, so you just pull out some information in the exact same way that I've just been looking to do with our, uh, our contacts. I'm going to use the get record uh, feature here. Pick any company, it doesn't really matter. And I could pick, I'll pick customer, shall I? Just so it's sort of similar to what we're looking at. I notice that we have to provide a, um, a row ID here, so it's not actually looking to handle uh, multiples. In, in this scenario where our custom connector can can handle that if we passed in some filters it would it would just pass over a single records or <clears throat> a reduced subset of records but the standard one is very much about looking to use individuals if if, if it can so you would possibly end up having to wrap this inside of um, one of these here this apply to each where it's then iterating through an array, which is what we're currently pulling from the custom one, and then uh, retrieve from this from this endpoint. Sometimes feels a little bit of a backwards um, step if I know that I just create a custom connector and I can kind of disregard that completely. I did a custom connector for the customers uh, page. And uh, yeah, I'd have, I'd have what I need and I can just forget about this. Uh, the reason probably why they're wanting us to think about this more is to get used to the, the idea of the uh, the system IDs that are now in, in, in play and that level of individuality uh, that comes with that set of information that we've years gone by didn't necessarily have to uh, comply with. Well, um, yeah, happy to go to go to questions if uh, if any have been locked, uh, Luke. No, no, no questions locked. I have one question myself. Uh, sh now you showed how to build this custom connector. Uh, you added two actions: a get and a patch for a contact. I reckon you could add multiple actions for any other let's say table or whatever. So your connector could contain like the business central connector uh, um, exposure uh, or exposing other entities in the database. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so you can just with API uh, pages themselves, you can construct it to handle multiple sets of data anyway. And you can also do queries um, as APIs. Yeah. So that, that could be done for, for sure. And then layering in the extra commands would, um, you know, by and large, it's just a case of understanding what's the the unique piece of information. Um, so if I was doing a post command, I would need to have my uh, page or at least the table that it goes to to understand, oh, okay, when a new record is created, it has to generate a uh, an ID or a number or whatever you end up using as your own data key field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, clear. We're almost at the hour. That's nicely uh, timed. Thank you very much.
let me switch to uh, to my side to uh, uh, close up for today. And uh, of course, thanks uh, all for being here. Thank you very much, uh, Joshua, for uh, uh, sharing this with us. Um, the recording probably will be out on YouTube this night. And um, yeah, before we leave, let's uh, uh, say this to each other. Happy New Year. And yes, I hope 2021 will be uh, in a different way, more special to uh, what we had last year or the, the running year. Stay healthy, everybody. Enjoy the holidays. And uh, once more, Josh, thank you very much for uh, sharing this with us. See you next time in uh, about four weeks time, I guess, on the 12th or three weeks, uh, three or four weeks on the 12th of January. Bye for now and uh, have a nice day or and evening. Bye.